Hey, Foot Clan, it is the time of year that championships are being won in fantasy football. And if you are a champ or you know you're going to be a champ, go to fantasychamps.com. You can order right now these awesome, awesome fantasy football jerseys that got your name on the front and the back, the team name. You pick the colors and the numbers. They're awesome. Get that this week and come back next week for your trophies, your rings, your belts. Be a champ at fantasychamps.com. Promo code BALLERS to save 10%. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from the Playdraft Studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. <laughs> Happy Tuesday! Oh, it is for many a people. Well, it is for you. Yes, it is. I agree. Because, uh, what, you found out Ace Ventura is on Netflix? Ace Ventura 2? Yes. When so, I calls. mean, it doesn't get any better than that for Jason. No, no. It's Welcome. these rhinos. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Thank you for joining us. It is Tuesday, December 19th, and we are officially in week 16 of the NFL season. It's championship week, people. If you're not tilting this very moment, you're doing it wrong because <laughs> I, I have already... I've already performed a full 720. My tilt is so hard. Wow. As I pre- prepare for championship week, That's I am Tony invested. Hawk level. Oh, Mike. yeah. Oh, for sure. I've I've grabbed. I'm holding down left. I'm holding Benny the Hanna's. circle. Mike, are you going to pull the maneuver of benching your roster I'm right now? I'm considering it. I am definitely considering going with. I'm facing Andy. I need all the edges I can get. You don't want to let me know who you're starting. So yes. you might. You're going to do that one? Yeah, I may do that. Look, people fear me. Makes sense. <laughs> well, you, to be fair, your team is twelve and one. Uh, thir- what? Thirteen and one now. Yes. Yeah. So, thank you for the correction. Thirteen and, and one. And avenged his only loss to Brooks. It's true. It's so, gonna be a well, long time to avenge this upcoming loss. Am I right? <laughs> Champions. <laughs> high five. Wait, <laughs> you guys are on the same team together? I mean, I'm me and the Foot Clan. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. It'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I um. What do we got on the show? We got some bad beats, some close wins. We got the waiver wire, got the QB streamers, got the review of last night's game, which outside of Julio not having a monster game, you know, you kind of got what you wanted from the other big pieces in the game. I do. I had to share a story from last night, though, um, because you guys will enjoy it. And occasionally things happen in our lives that are funny. Uh, and this was one of those times. So last night, late last night, I went to uh, meet my sister at a coffee shop for a cup of coffee late last night. She just bought a new Honda Civic, and um, we both arrived. Spoiler? Uh, no. No No spoiler? What do you mean? Does she have a spoiler on the Honda Civic? Oh, I, I, <laughs> I was thinking you're saying I'm spoiling something in the story. No. No spoiler. She... No spoiler. Okay. So she just bought a new Honda Civic. And uh, we happen to pull up at the exact same time to the coffee shop. Uh, she doesn't know I see her, but like we pull in and I'm, I'm behind her and she parks in one spot of the parking lot. I park in the other. So I walk over and, um, you know, we're a, a funny family and we like to, to joke around with each other. So I, Jason, they think they're a funny family. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm no Jason family, but uh, so I, I decide to walk over and I think it'd be really funny to kind of be looming outside her car door. When she opens it, because she'll get scared, right? <laughs> right. Okay. And uh, always scare the girl I, in the parking lot. Andy. Yeah. Well, that that's exactly right. It's your little sister. It's funny. And uh, this is where the story went sideways because um, pepper spray. Oh. Well, it wasn't my sister. Oh no! 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 You're oh, that's the worst. No, no, it was a uh, mid sixties woman. Oh. My. Um. <laughs> and I'm in a dark coat. In a oh, dark parking lot. What have you done? Just feet from her. Oh, my feet goodness. Feet from her. Hawking by her and door. Here is, and she happened to own a brand new Civic. Wow. So I have never felt more like some sort of predator and criminal <laughs> than I did in that moment. I hope you apologize profusely I to this woman. Apologized did and you I, buy her coffee? I held the door open for her. Oh. I tried to explain myself. But how do you explain how yourself do you explain to that? a... Oh, I was trying to uh, just 
uh, terrify another little girl, uh, my sister. Don't worry about it. Yes. So that that was my night. I terrified <laughs> an old woman. I hope you learned your lesson, good sir. I, you know, I, that's what, awesome. what was great is as I approached the car, I was like, I'm not sure is that is that our car. I'm like, that's definitely your car. And then I proceeded all in to terrify this poor lady <laughs> in the parking lot. So. You had a better night than I did if you won or lost. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers on YouTube. The website's thefantasyfootballers.com. Harass me on Twitter at Andy Holloway. Harass Jason at Jason FFL. Mike is at FF Hitman. And uh, we'll jump back into this Monday night game briefly. Doug Martin was inactive. Uh, yeah. Mike, uh, Jason got the Krampus. Yeah, you <laughs> certainly did. I uh, However, it did come out that it, this was a team rules violation. I think it was running backs who are running for like under two yards of carry. Oh, I that thought was, it was like running backs running backwards. That was the they viol- missed the game. The violation was being putrid on the field. How do you have a team's viol- like a team violation the third to last week of the season when you might be cut? I mean, that just uh, it, and he's already had issues because if you're Doug Martin, just trying to put myself in the position of what's happening to Doug Martin. I mean, you got to be tilting, right? You, you're you're a pro athlete. You believe in yourself, which you should. And you're in the NFL. You're a stud. He signed a big contract. He's trying to make right after his mistake of getting suspended. He's had a he's had some injuries. He's been bad. Got benched last week. So I there was probably some lashing out that happened. That's that's just my the, the way I, I think things went down. Now, going forward, he's supposed to be active. Yeah, so Peyton that, Barber didn't do anything to secure that role. In fact, he fumbled away one of his uh, best opportunities. Right. So next week, this coming week, championship week. It stinks. I assume you have to avoid both, but if you had to take... I'd take Barber if I had to take yeah, one. If, if I'm going in on a Bucks running back, which hopefully you don't have to do that, I would go with Peyton Barber because he fumbled, but he still played at least... He played all right. Better than, Doug, better than Doug Martin. Yeah. Good, I might good might yard ha- per carry. I might have to do it, though. <laughs> uh, play yeah, Barber? you might be stuck having to play Martin. <laughs> yeah. No. My, my, oh, no. My championship team, down Alf, down Antonio Brown, down Hunter Henry. And listen, Foot Clan, I've seen down people out Alf. there. Yes. <laughs> I've seen people out there going, oh, I got in, but now it's over because I lost Antonio. You, no. You no, 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 no. Shame on you. You're in it. You get yes. one game. I mean, fantasy football is crazy. Put out the best lineup you can, scratch and claw, and get that hashtag for clear title. Parappa the Rapper says you got to believe. Deshaun Jackson, Cameron Brait, O.J. Howard all injured in last night's game. Cameron Brait did come back. O.J. Howard was in a walking boot. And Deshaun Jackson, we don't know the status. He, uh, you know, he goes from you don't want to start him to now you definitely don't want to start him. On the other side, Devonta Freeman delivered for oh, fantasy yeah. owners. 22 for 125, a touchdown. 22 for 125. That, I believe I, that I, is exactly I, I what heard I said. 32. I heard nope, 32. 22. I apologize. And then Devonta Freeman, five receptions as well. Now, Julio Jones did not Mm-mm. deliver. No. Worst game against Tampa Bay in the since, since 2013. Unfortunate. Matt Ryan, nothing special. <laughs> All right. But, but on the other side... Jameis Winston, uh, this was just one of those games where Jameis looks like a competent, good quarterback. I mean, a 77% completion. 130 on rating. Uh, 290 yards, three touchdowns. And that completion percentage should have been better. His team had a few hands drops where he, he hit his target. So moving into next week, Jameis Winston is going to be in consideration for a lot of people. Myself included, but it's at Carolina. <sighs> Whatever you do, Mike, don't make the wrong choice of quarterback. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I told you, 720. It's already happened. The <laughs> tilt is real. <laughs> I will say for Mike Evans owners, the Deshaun Jackson, the O.J. Howard injuries, when Mike Evans was truly the elite fantasy option, it was when Mike Evans was the only target and Jameis had to force feed him. He is a great volume player and he hasn't right. had the volume this year so I, I agree both both uh, Mike Evans and Cameron Bray stand to have much better performances next week if those injuries hold up 
Yeah, you really hope that's a good sign for Evans. If he doesn't come down with that 42-yard touchdown, it's not a great night. It's four for four, sure. 40. So it's – I mean, but he made the play. Well, so he, they had the, the uh, he also had the OPI touchdown. You're right. Called and that. another 29-yard OPI just play. Yeah, stop breaking the rules. <laughs> you got Mike Evans, here's what you got to do. You go get the tape on DeAndre Hopkins. And yes. You, and you figure out – how does DeAndre Hopkins get away with pushing off uh, see, on here's 90% a, of his plays? Here's the difference. You'll get the tricks. The difference is DeAndre Hopkins does more slapping and and like pushing down versus a Mike shove. Evans does the extend and shove away. Well, when you're really big, it's harder to get away with stuff, plain and simple. True. When you're gigantic, you overpower people on accident. You got to learn some Look at Gronk. Gronk gets called – yeah. Gronk is called on more OPI than almost anybody yeah. else, and he's enormous. And Maybe it's just because from when another they planet. push people, they go people flying. Fall. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. All right. Wanted to share a few bad beats and some close wins that were shared with us by the Foot Clan. Vince, Sue, won by point zero four thanks to Cameron Braid, who came back oh, after the knee injury. Wow. Congrats. Yeah, Johnny was in first place all season, three minutes before the game, his opponent switched to O.J. Howard. As they should have. Instead of Cameron Brait. If he had kept in Brait, he would have won and would have been oh, in the championship. Johnny! Oh. Johnny! Congrats to your opponent. Oh. Ouch. Sorry. That hurts Larry me. Smiley playing his son in the semifinals. Needed six points from Julio and got eight. Oh! oh congrats. Keeping the family in order there. You're, you are the one person happy with Julio's performance. All right, this one's uh, from at Call Me Rudes on Twitter. Loser of our league runs the beer mile in a dress in Iowa on Christmas. <laughs> the guy lost because Matt Bryant blocked field goal. Had his field goal blocked. Second year in a row for him. That's a tough one. Yeah. Blocked field goal. I, the game I lost by point six. I had Goskowski miss an extra point. Mm. And I will not forget. <laughs> yeah, the, the, this one from a at... Andy Holloway. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Steven, Matt Bryant block kick lost me the game. Mark, Matt Bryant block kick, only reason I won. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing about all of these stories is that every single time there is a, a play, you know, I saw so many people upset about De Devont Freeman, he, that fumble going into the end zone, they would have won. But that means that just as many people did win because of that. Every time that something bad or good happens – the opposite is always true. <laughs> yeah. You should write a book. Yeah. All right. Matthew Cunningham, last one. If he, he says this, Mike, you'll enjoy it. If only I would have started Blake Bortles, I would have made the championship. Definitely not something I thought I would say at the start of this season. I mean, it, it always depends on who his other option was of going over Yeah, Blake if it was Bortles. Russell Wilson, yeah. you were playing or, Russell Wilson. Or Brady or Aaron Rodgers. I mean, but. As much as I love Blake Bortles last week and love him this week, you couldn't you couldn't bench your stud quarterback for Blake Bortles and felt good about it. We're yep. going to jump into news. We're going to jump into the waiver wire. But before we do that, Mike, I want to ask you a question. Maybe you can illuminate yes, something sir. for our listeners. If you were on the bad beat side of this equation and you're out, what can you do in the next two weeks if you're in a keeper league or a dynasty league to stay relevant, to stay active, and to be forward thinking for your team for next year? Because at this point, it's Operation 2018 for you if you've lost. Well, it, we've given this tip a few times, but make sure you are heading up to, you know, there's websites like Spotrack where you can uh, check out player contracts. And that, that is a real, real big help to see who's going to be changing, who's likely to be changing teams, whose teammates are likely to be changing teams, changing up those opportunities. Get ahead of them because once March hits and free agency hits, then everyone's going to know about it. But if you're making the moves before, it, like Tampa Bay, Charles Sims. Did you know that Charles Sims, is who's been fantastic a couple years ago, he's a good player, just his, his opportunity that the team has soured on him. He's in a contract year. He's going to be on a different team. Maybe he turns into the pass catching back for a good team. I mean, you, you just – you have to – you don't know right now, but you got to take the shots. And I know there's a – this is a pretty hot topic because the, the, the world is very divided on this. 
if you're out, should you be allowed to add players, be active in the playoffs? My opinion is yes. Yes. Like the Green Bay Packers, right? Jason and I talked about we think that Aaron Rodgers will play this upcoming week. I feel less confident, but continue. Yeah, oh, okay, I, I, but but the logic was you're they're playing spoiler right. for your division. It's like the Tam Tampa Bay last night. What are they playing for? They're playing. They're, why are they up for this game? Well, on top of you're an NFL athlete, but you're trying to to ruin the season for your division opponent. So I'm all about ruining things for everyone else. If I'm going down, I agree. You are all about that. If the world is burning, if if my world is burning, I'm not pushing you. I'm not saving you. No, you're throwing some I'm, fire my I'm, way. I'm pulling you. I'm throwing the bucket yeah. of fire there over is. to your island. Enjoy. You're coming with me! <laughs> News and notes from around the league. Well, let's talk about that then briefly, the Aaron Rodgers situation. I I know we disagreed yesterday. I, I don't see much of a reason for them to play him. Now, he is going to be the good soldier and say, I want to play. That's the way it's going to be. He wants to be the tough guy. Every quarterback does. They want to be the leader. And then, the, in my opinion, then the, the, the coaching staff and the medical staff, they're going to take that decision out of his hands, and they're going to do the right thing, and you're not going to play a guy in a worthless game. I understand the argument about Minnesota, but you're not stopping them from making the playoffs. That's not the this. situation. You're just talking about you know, risking your franchise quarterback who took too many hits. They signed a third quarterback yesterday. I don't think he's playing. Yeah, I, I, I don't see why he would. So my money is on that side. I, th I answered the question uh, yesterday that he would play. I would play him if I was the general manager. I, you know, I, I would ask the question of, what do I have in Jordy Nelson? What, right. They need to know. Is Jordy still fine? Is he going to be fine next year? I would love to see a couple of games with Aaron Rodgers and Jordy to be like, okay, what's the lay of the land here? Be able to go into the NFL draft having a better idea of what my needs are as a team because your team is completely different with Aaron Rodgers. Um, but uh, with with the comments from Mike McCarthy, you have to assume he's already hedging. Like you said, they signed that quarterback. I'm more skeptical that he plays. But goodness gracious, Aaron, play. I'm playing Case Keenum. <laughs> I need the Green Bay Packers to be able to score on the Vikings. My, my, my championship roster is hot garbage right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're in. You just you are exactly. stop complaining. I'm going to scratch. I'm going to claw. I'm going to get it. Those are the best ones to win, though, if you find a way. You know the smell of hot garbage? Delicious in <laughs> victory. Yes. All right, I'm going to fly through these guys so we can get into the waivers. Uh, Keenan Allen should be fine, according to head coach Anthony Lynn. Mm, Hunter Henry, we'll status up in the air due to a small laceration on his kidney. Have to believe he's out. Which means Antonio Gates has some relevance this Absolutely. week. Lumbering Antonio Gates. Uh, Marquise Lee expected to return by the playoffs or sooner, but I think that means he's out this week. Rex Burkhead, th they're optimistic he'll return for the playoffs, but out this week. James Conner, you're done. Knee surgery. So Fitzgerald Toussaint, we mentioned it yesterday. Yeah, if you're playing weeks, I guess we'll say it in the waivers as well, but we, if you're playing week 17, number one, please fix your league. But number two... You need no matter what your situation is. If it you doesn't have matter Bell, if, if you yeah. don't, you pick up Fitzgerald Toussaint in the event that they're going to rest Le'Veon Bell next week because you have a complete and total workhorse running back. Yep. Drew Stanton is starting for the Cardinals. The Blaine Gabbard experiment is apparently over. We He this went, is he went fine. from future franchise quarterback to not playing and Drew Stanton playing very quickly. Yeah. So there you go. Uh Deshaun Kaiser's gonna start. Week 16 against the Bears. Start your Bears. Uh, <laughs> Bill O'Brien said Tom Savage is going to miss the rest of the season, most likely, with a concussion. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it. I mean, the Broncos don't have a starting quarterback decided yet. Vance Joseph hasn't talked about it. Um, anything? Uh, any other news you guys feel like we need to get uh, into? Well, not fully into it, but Thomas Davis from the Panthers, he's been suspended for two games. He will appeal. It's likely – one of those things that's going to drop down to one, but so I think that's really good news the, for Cameron Bright. Say the aforementioned, we were talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If Thomas Davis is out for the Panthers, it's definitely a a hit. It's, it's not world changing, no. but it's but it's a hit to the defense. 
All right, before we jump into the waiver pickups for the week and our streaming quarterback options, we want to thank today's sponsor, Indochino. Look, every man looks better in a suit. And I'm going to tell you about this experience I had with Indochino and their website and how easy this was. Look, I'm not the kind of guy who really wants to go through the rigmarole of going into the uh, department store. The what? The rigmarole. He oh, nailed it. It is the worst. It is the worst. And uh, look, Indochino makes it super easy to get a suit made to your exact measurements at a great price. You choose from hundreds of top quality fabrics. It was really fun. It was choo- it was fun to choose like the interior fabric on the jacket and things like that. Your lapel, you can choose your monogram, all that stuff. Um, they've been featured in major publications and are now the largest made to measure menswear company. So you know that they are trusted. They've been used by a lot of men everywhere to get a great suit. And here's how it works. You visit a showroom or you shop online like I did at Indochino.com. Pick your fabric, choose your customization, submit your measurements, place your order, and wait for it to arrive in just a few weeks. This week, our listeners get any premium Indochino suit for just $359 at Indochino.com when entering footballers at checkout. That's 50% off the regular price for a made-to-measure premium suit, plus shipping is free. That's Indochino.com, promo code FOOTBALLERS for any premium suit for just $359 in free shipping. It's an incredible deal for a suit that will fit you better than anything off the rack ever would. Want to thank today's sponsor, SeatGeek. Buying tickets to sports and concerts, it can be complicated and confusing. There is a better way to buy with SeatGeek. They are the smartest, easiest way to get tickets to every type of live event. Not just sports and music. I'm a live comedy guy. Right? That's that's my favorite live event to go to. SeatGeek makes it easy because I jump on the SeatGeek app on my phone. Just a few taps. Just a few taps. Two taps. Few taps. It's the easiest way to shop for tickets. SeatGeek is designed to make your ticket buying experience easier than ever because they save you time. They save you money. They search multiple ticket sites, compare the prices for you. They get you amazing deals, and they grade every ticket based on the value. It helps you easily, easily identify the best or uh, the best value for your budget. I'm telling you that SeatGeek, we all use it. All of us have the Super SeatGeek easy. app on our phone. Makes it very easy to find tickets. Best of all, our listeners can get 20 bucks off their first SeatGeek purchase. Download the SeatGeek app. You enter the promo code FOOTBALLERS today. That's promo code FOOTBALLERS for $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase. Put me in, coach. Sounded like you get 20 free ducks with your purchase. It's a That's good what it deal. Like you. If really I got 20 free ducks with anything, you're taking that deal? Sign me up immediately. You want 20 ducks. Dude, my, uh, th- that's why a duck is tattooed on my arm. A duck's my favorite animal. Is it really? Oh, what? I love this ducks. Is, Where's this your is duck breaking tattoo? breaking news. Uh, on my forearm? Well, I, you know I can't see your arm. I mean, I was like asking. Yeah. Incredible. I, so why, just, what makes you like, you've always loved ducks? Oh, I've yeah, I've always loved ducks. My, Mike grow, the Mallard Wright. That's right. All Gr- right. Growing up, uh, I had a buddy who lived on some farmland. They had chickens and they had a duck. And they, whose name was Howard, and we were of best course it we, was. we were best friends. Howard the duck, and then they got a duck named Donald, and I was best friends with that duck. Wow! <laughs> oh, was there like any jealous jealousy issues? Never between the there's ducks. A, there's enough Mike to go around for all the bum, ducks. Bum, bum. <laughs> all right, yeah, the more getting I, now. I need to change all passwords related to duck. <laughs> yes, Mike the Mallard. All right, <laughs> the. The waiver wire is different now for the next couple of weeks. Look, if you are in a, a Week 16 championship week, you're looking at guys to play this week and this week only, and we're not going to get muddled down with anything other than that. We're going to give you names, players that we believe are out there that you should sign and you can play if you need them. Injuries happen, decisions, matchups. You've got a lot of situations. Last week, guys like Jimmy Garoppolo were great starts, and this week they play Jacksonville. Oh, no. That's the way all stories Dude. go, by the way. It's last week, this guy was a great start, and this week they play Jacksonville. Right. Yeah. Don't play Jimmy Garoppolo. No. So we're going we're gonna to focus on people you can start this week. Jason, wide receivers. So these two guys are probably owned, but it's worth checking out because about a quarter of leagues are still available. But Sterling Shepard and Robert Woods, I think even more so Robert Woods. Yeah, that's he's got, the one I'd go for. He's got the better matchup this week at Tennessee. He looks like the clear number one target for one of, if not the best offense in the NFL right now. So probably owned, but definitely Robert Woods is a starting, you know, championship week right. worthy wide receiver. If you're digging deeper, I would say that there's two great options. I, I have three. 
I well, have three great options. We probably are speaking the exact same language here because when I, I, say, I said three and you said two. But my two includes three players. You have the Jacksonville <laughs> duo. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I'm saying your two good options, one of which is picking either of the Jacksonville wide receivers, okay. D.D. Westbrook or Keelan Cole, and then the other is Martavis Bryant. Mm, I one, so I, I grouped one more. the I grouped the Jags. I see, I see. You, you got one more, so we got we're going four. But so before we get into the guy that I really like, uh, besides these, of course, but Keelan Cole, D.D. Westbrook, people are going to want to know if you have to pick up one and you're playing them this week. I'm staying in the flames. With Cole? I am. With the big play, Keelan Cole? Yeah, three straight touchdowns, nine targets. I'm just going to stay in those flames. He's playing great. Jason? Yeah, I mean, I I, th I think I D agree. To be fair, Didi, to Didi. Be fair Didi's been fantastic yes. except for last week. Yes, Didi has been great. Um, he is the better player, at least the higher you know touted recruit. The, the previous several weeks, six receptions, five receptions, five receptions, um, I, I don't think you're going to go wrong with either, but Keelan is more widely available, and I think he is the bigger play guy. So oh, he certainly. I'm going to go Keelan. And Martavis Bryant, obviously. Great play without Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown will be out, and Marty and, well, I mean, Juju Smith-Schuster, there's 0% chance that he's in your waiver wire, but may, maybe it's like a 0.1% So who's chance. your other guy then? Cause Mike I, Wallace. Yeah. I he's been fantastic. I, I like not, he's, he's always the guy you don't want. Yeah, exactly. And the reason you don't want him right now is simply because the touchdowns aren't coming. But here's the past three weeks against Detroit, five for 116 against Pittsburgh, three for 72 last week against the Browns, six for 89. You aren't hearing Mike Wallace's name enough because he hasn't scored since week 11 against the Green Bay Packers. But now he gets to take on the Indianapolis Colts, who are – their secondary is pretty banged up. And on top of that, they're bad. Mike Wallace, I think, is a is a great option this week to go along with these other guys. Jeremy Macklin is not expected to play. So more targets for Mike Wallace. Right. Joe Flacco is one of those really low-level streaming options. But Mike Wallace will be the benefactor of Joe Flacco, who – like Blake Bortles, Joe Flacco has been playing a lot better If for people who haven't been paying attention to that. So I like Mike Wallace a lot. I like Colin Westbrook and Martavis Bryant. You you have fully convinced me on the Mike Wallace argument because I have been watching these games and constantly trying to remind myself that Mike Wallace is a legitimate thing. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, I, and I just keep forgetting because he's Mike Wallace. But, you know, look. Antonio Brown, Mike Wallace, ex-teammates. Right. He's, he's not replacing Antonio Brown, but he can be a plug-and-play uh, guy that gets you double digits here this week. And uh, I would I, I would say this. Indianapolis's run defense has been much improved over the second half of the season, which, which helps Mike Wallace need to be involved if they're not able to just run at will with Alex Collins. Maybe one of the hardest things you can uh, try to do in fantasy football is find a start-worthy running back in the final week of the season for a championship matchup. But if you had to take a shot, the main waiver wire guys right now, it would be Peyton Barber, who got the majority of the work, if they want to check him out. Yeah. It would be taking a shot at a New England running back. <laughs> James White or Mike Gillisey, where would you lean in that, in that dark oh, throw? Because goodness. if Burkhead's going to be out, you're going to get Deion Lewis – He's going to be on the field a ton. I, I guess you know James White's going to be on the field. I, I guess I lean James White by by a pretty wide margin. Just because of for floor? Yeah, and because, uh, look, we, we know that Deion Lewis isn't going to be on there out, out there for the entirety of this game. They don't want to give him that kind of a workload. And like you said, the floor for James White, the targets that maybe would have gone Burkhead's way, they're not going Gillisley's way, but they can go White's way. Yeah, it's very fair. So I think that he would be the guy – who even in spite of being number three on the ladder on the the third rung, right. he's caught a touchdown here or there. So that's where I lean. And Mike Gillisley. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, the glory! Play. I mean, you got to have a heart of stone to play Mike Gillisley, but it's not a bad option. Rex Burkhead has been getting a ton of goal line carries, and I honestly do expect the Patriot 
the Patriot way is, okay, plug and play. Yeah. It's not say, okay, Deion Lewis, you're shifting over. Now you're the full-time goal line back. It's we'll put Mike Gillisley right back in there. Yeah, if Mike Gillisley had multiple touchdowns this game. It would not surprise me. No. Elijah Penny, Kerwin Williams running backs for the Cardinals. They play the Giants. This is a health check on Kerwin Williams. If he's good to go, Kerwin is the play. If he's out, Elijah Penny is – I mean, you're digging deep, but the Giants is a fantastic matchup, and they're at home. Throwing some probably owned guys out there, Bilal Powell, Duke Johnson, Theo Riddick, those would be other guys that you can take a peek on. Bilal Powell is very interesting against the Chargers. He is, though every time I match people up with this terrible Chargers rushing defense, it never pans out the way I want. <laughs> also, it's worth saying, Amir Abdul is really frustrated with the fact that Riddick, he came out with the, the injury briefly, and he was still behind Teon Green. So if he, you know, play better, there's a chance that Abdullah, like that frustration could lead to just in inactive in this game. So Teon Green and Theoretic could both be, oh, if, like viable streaming. Yeah. It, miracles. That's it's a situation to monitor because if Abdullah is out, then Theoretic becomes a great play. Also, Chris Ivory. Don't forget Chris Ivory. If for some reason Fournette does miss another game. Ivory's going to be the, 17 carries last week. I right. mean, he'll get you have, and he's 27% owned, so you need to pay attention to him there. And TJ Yeldon didn't really have that bad of a game either. Uh, six, seven, eight points in uh, most leagues. At the tight end position, we talked about it earlier. Hunter Henry's going to miss the next game. Antonio Gates. Is, Likely. We, that's not a confirmation yet, but prepare for him to miss right. the game. Antonio Gates is an option. Who else do you guys like at tight end? Mike? Well, if this is, of course, the he's probably on, but check for Greg Olson. Maybe someone rage dropped him after the past two weeks because uh, he's he's back nine for sixteen and a touchdown. But here, this is where it's this is where your championships will be made. Yeah, on the backs of these streaming tight ends, Eric Ebron has been very involved lately, even scoring a touchdown last week coming off. So this is two very strong performances. Mr. Playoffs, a.k.a. Mr. Necessary, Charles Clay, 5 for 68 on nine targets. Tyrod comes in, nine targets for Charles Clay. Now, he's on the road against New England, so it's the, the matchup's not my favorite. Yeah, that's, that's, that stinks. It's been uh, – they have not – the Patriots have not given up a touchdown to the tight end since week six, and I am deciding for, for my championship. I have both of these guys on my roster, Charles Clay – guy who I hopped on his back last right. year and got the championship in the listener league. He who is who I have been expecting to play after having lost Hunter Henry or Cameron Brait, who things are lining up for him. If OJ Howard is out and Thomas Davis is out. Yeah, you might have. I might Deshaun Jackson Brait. is out. I, I lean Brait, but it just seems less magical to me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Charles Clay, I'm going to spoiler alert. They do a little secret Santa around the Buffalo Bills uh, locker room. Your secret Santa is Tyrod Taylor. Yeah. When he's in the lineup, the targets yeah. come, the production comes, and uh, the likelihood of you being down in this game and having to move the ball through the air a little bit, it's there. Um, anybody else you want to touch on at the tight end position before you get into streaming quarterback? You know, Vernon Davis is okay. Denver has been susceptible to the tight end. He is, he's been a hard guy to trust, yes, but you has. still have – the boom potential from Vernon Davis, where if I'm digging deep and I'm looking at would I rather have a Ricky Seals Jones or a Jesse James, I would I you would rather Vernon? have Vernon Davis. By the way, for Ricky Seals Jones' disappointing performance, um, Troy Nicholas outsnapped him. Yeah. So that's worth noting. We thought Jermaine Gresham being out of there meant, you know, the fact of the matter is he can't block. Right. <laughs> so I think Nicholas is in there for more snaps. Seals Jones has his – niche role which back is, to the ocean you're going <laughs> oh, 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 oh oh uh you know he's gonna get in there for 30 35 snaps and run 10 routes and get five or six targets don't underestimate the power of a good defense in week 16 Certainly. hopefully you already picked a couple up but if you didn't these are the defenses that we love in this upcoming week the bears the bears against deshaun Go kaiser bears and the Cleveland Browns, and this is at home, and this is Deshaun Kaiser, and Kaiser loves to throw the ball to the opponent. The oh. Bears have been a top 10 fantasy defense. Almost as defense. much as he loves to get sacked. Yeah. It's tough. It's up in the air for him on which, <laughs> which one? 
Well, it, it, ask Kaiser. Like, would you rather get sacked or throw a pick or do both? That's at that's the same his choice. Time. That's his choice. Is that sack where the ball goes in the air? And oh, that's Winston. That's, that's, that's Winston's that's favorite. True. We call that the Jameis. The Jameis. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I like the Bears a lot. They're a top ten fantasy defense on the season. Very underrated, not just in in real life, but. For fantasy, they've been okay, and now at home in a cold weather game, what I see from the Bears is not necessarily like okay, they're going to be this high scoring win you the week, but they are to me safe. Safe. The Chargers, sixty seven percent owned, but against Bryce Petty's Jets, let Bryce Petty get a taste of Melvin Ingram and <laughs> Joey Bosa, and uh, he won't like no, uh, he won't like it very much. <laughs> Um, the Patriots. This doesn't taste good. The Patriots. It's very bitter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's not. It tastes like turf. Uh, the Patriots, they I, have a home game heard, against the Buffalo. I heard turd at first. <laughs> <laughs> turf makes a lot more sense. Yeah, yeah. The Pats turf play turds. The Buffalo Bills. The Cardinals take on the Giants. The Cardinals, I, the, I like the Bears a lot. Hopefully you have those Ravens that we <laughs> that was talking about a month ago. But the Cardinals at home against the Giants. I know the Giants took off. They took flight, so to speak, against the Eagles. Divisional game, weird things happen. I feel very confident, despite that that performance by the Giants, to play the Cardinals at home. I also think the Pittsburgh Steelers could be an option. I know that their defense has gotten worse with the loss of Ryan Shazier, but they're, they're going to figure it out, and they're going up against TJ Yeah, Yates. I think that's the key there. So they they have something to play for here, maintaining you know home field, and uh, at this point you've got to trust in any defense against T.J. Yates. Full stream ahead. All right, if you have to stream in week sixteen, where are you going, Mike? You know where I'm going. Back to the board? Yes. Never abort. Oh! Never abort championships with Blake Bortles, my rising star, my stream, my start, my everything. <laughs> no, <laughs> Mike, I, I noticed you forego the warning this, this time. Because oh. this, the warning is not needed. If you still need the warning, you're not paying attention to what Blake Bortles is doing. He is balling out multi-touchdowns the last three weeks, no interceptions. Going deep, the yards per attempt. It's, it, look, Blake Bortles is a great option this week on the road against San Francisco. He is absolutely on fire. Keelan Cole is on fire. Uh, it, I Look, I talked about I have Jameis Winston in my championship week against Andy. It's a dynasty, so I can't grab Blake Bortles. If I had the option to go Blake Bortles over Jameis Winston, I would do it. Hmm. Yeah, I would too. So as San Francisco, they're playing for the potential to, you know, get into that number two seed mix. I I think it's a great start. Yeah, it's it's not bad. Last How week, many? Well, I just looking at this. last week. All three streamers worked out well. Jimmy G, Blake Bortles, Case Keenum. That's right. Yeah, and I that's I think, nice. I think Case Keenum at home, you can you can stay with him. He's not really a streamer option anymore. Sure, but He's if you had picked him up, roll with him. Yes. Yeah, I just man, come on, Rogers, play. Make Case Keenum have to keep throwing the ball. Um, for me this week, how many how many touchdowns did Blake Bortles throw last week? Three. That's pretty good, but it's not as good as my guy. Oh, Nick Foles, four touchdowns, no interceptions. It looked like that magical year he had where he threw what was it like twenty eight yeah. touchdowns when and he four interceptions. Was an eagle. Oh, he's a good Look, Eagles quarter. All the pieces for success are around him. He's protected in the pocket. The defense gives him short fields. He's got Aguilar, and he's got uh, Alshon Jeffrey and Ertz. I mean, the weapons are all there, and it's a Monday night game. Against you, Oakland. You get to win your title on Monday night with Nick Foles. Oh, Isn't that the that's thing you want to hang in your on your uh, record? Yeah. Now, <laughs> I, I will say this. The Oakland Raiders, they are a terrible defense, but the last three weeks they have been much better they have not even given up uh they haven't even given up 15 points to a quarterback in the last three weeks part of that you know yeah, give is, me those quarterbacks the, so the quarterbacks was uh week 13 new york i don't think that was that the week eli was out yes okay so that doesn't count 
Then you had Kansas City, Alex Smith. They shut him down pretty good. That's right. legit. And then last week, Dak Prescott took himself out by throwing bad passes mm. everywhere. Yeah. So I, I don't give the credit there to Oakland. So a uh, mixed bag. I, I don't think you're going to see another four touchdown, zero interception game. But Nick Foles, he's got enough weapons around him, and he is capable enough to where you can roll him out for the second week. Foles and Bortles getting championships won, just like everyone thought at the beginning of the year. And this is why we say you don't win championships at the draft. Nope, oh, you set the foundation and then you gotta you gotta it's a, adjust. It's a year long fun event, fantasy yeah. football. Build a skyscraper. So you're putting on the lightning rod right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh for the record, my streaming quarterback is also Nick Foles. I'm cheating this week. There aren't a lot of good streaming options. I love Nick Foles, so I'm gonna double down with him and uh He's look, only twenty seven percent owned, if so we, he if, should be available. So I'll just say this if we can do the double down then I'm going to shift. I, I would rather oh. Bortles than Foles. So I, you guys are double Bortles and yeah. I'm Foles. There you go. Both good options. <laughs> okay. By the way, I think it might be worth it at this point to kind of lay out the playoff picture as well because that might make a decision on who you're starting on certain teams, it's who fair. has something to play for. Right now in the AFC, the, the teams that have clinched are the Patriots, the Steelers, the Jaguars. Uh, the Jags are still playing for the potential of, of seeding. Um, the Chiefs right now are in, the Titans are in, and the Bills are in. That's bananas. The teams it that is. are currently out but still have a chance are Baltimore playing for something, the Chargers are playing for something, the Raiders still have a minuscule shot at 6-8, and eight, as do the Dolphins. Not entirely dead, but both of those teams are pretty close. But they'll still be playing because, I mean, you're playing for the opportunity for all the situations to right. go your way. Similar to what Green Bay would have been like had, had Atlanta lost last night. In the NFC, the Eagles, Vikings, Rams, Saints, Panthers, they're all in right now. The Falcons are currently in. The three teams that are out that still have a chance, the Seahawks, the Lions, and the Cowboys. Okay, All three of those teams are 8-6. and six. The They can Seahawks. all make the playoffs, but they're all out right now, and it's all going to be at the expense of... Atlanta or Carolina right? Uh, if they were to lose out. So those are the teams that have uh, something on the line right now. The Eagles are 12-2. and two, The Vikings are 11-3. and three. So if the Eagles lose, the Vikings win. There's a chance for them to grab that number one seed in home field throughout the playoffs, including the Super Bowl. So uh, those things, you know, motivation matters. I mean, look at Cincinnati. Look at A.J. Green right. last week. It does matter. Wow. <laughs> what, I'm, looking at this, I'm looking at this line. So I, I know how important – you're bringing up these games and the importance. So the Seattle Seahawks, a perennial Super Bowl contender, uh, an absolute lock for the playoffs basically every single year. If they lose to Dallas this week, they're out. Yes. I mean, it's, it, it's not like, oh, this is a must win. No, this is a must win, period. But I was shocked to see that Dallas, even though they're home, they're a four-and-a-half point favorite Wait, against who's home? Seattle. Dallas. Who? Oh, yeah. I guess getting Zeke back moves the needle for Vegas. Yeah, it makes sense yeah. to me. I mean, you're at home. I mean, I, I probably would have pegged it around four or five points. Yeah. And uh, Seattle, it's not going well over there. I mean, Billy Wagner supposedly is going to play. He called out. Um, uh, Did you say Billy Wagner? Is it Bobby? <laughs> Did I say Billy? <laughs> yeah. Isn't Billy Wagner a pitcher? Uh, I think so. He is. He was a former closer. Yeah. 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 MLB knowledge. He is not good at stopping the run, though. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> this team is in trouble. The team's in trouble right <laughs> yes, now. Yes, they so, are. And Zeke, Zeke is back. That's going to make a big difference. Um, I would definitely side on Dallas on that one. All right, that is it for today's episode. Thanks for tuning in, supporting the show, jointhefoot.com. Thanks for everything you guys do. We'll be back tomorrow with uh, another episode of the show, and hopefully your holidays are going well. Absolutely. Hopefully you're in the title game, and we'll be rooting for you. Check out ballers or uh, draft.com slash ballers for your DFS action. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.